Welcome everyone to a product review. So I haven't done a product review for a while. Uh, I have used uh, rust pig uh, pigments in the past, microsol, microset, things like that as a product review. Today we are doing the Army Painter Wet Palette. So you probably heard a lot of things about wet palettes before. I generally use a tile so I can add the water or, or medium as I go. Obviously with a wet palette, you generally soak the palette in water, not in medium. Um, and you can't really control the amount of moisture, I guess. I mean, yes, it's a fixed amount of moisture all the time, brilliant. So it should keep your paint a bit longer. But uh, yeah, let's see what this is like. So we have two hydro foams and 50 hydro sheets. So presumably the foam is what the sheets sit on, so you shouldn't rip through too many of those. Okay, and it says on the front of the box, the best way to keep your wall paints fresh and ready. And that's the ideal. So I go away a lot on caravans, things like that, um, on holiday, and I find if the weather is even remotely hot outside, it's baking inside the caravan which means the paint on my tile will dry out really fast. So this should be a pretty nice addition. So obviously lots and lots of shiny, shiny, shiny at the moment. We'll cut that off in a second. Uh, the best work palette there is, superior quality and custom design to keep your wall paints preserved. Perfectly smooth and creamy, apparently. Now I want to eat the paints. Uh, but here are the dimensions, if anybody is interested. It's 13.8 centimetres wide and long, it's 19.8 centimetres. So pretty much the length of the box, it's fairly girthy, uh, I think. You um, can store your brushes inside the lid as well. Uh, includes a free painting guide and tool guide. Okay, so I have had army painter products in the past, mainly um, uh, like dropper bottles, things like that. But let's get rid of the horrible shiny cellophane and get inside the box, shall we? Okay, so the tool assembly and safety guide is inside. So you can probably see that I've been airbrushing recently without wearing my gloves. Lovely uh, Alpha Legion colours there, which are the correct Legion to use. For your loyalist and or and and traitor, possibly. Uh, okay, so inside basically uh, is for those starting out on hobby, how to cut parts of sprue, how to tidy up the models, so getting rid of mold lines, things like that, and uh, the best glues to use, a guide on pinning. So if you are new into the hobby, this is quite nice. So straight off the bat, it actually gives you a few little tips and tricks. Assembling using green stuff, which is always a nice little tip to have. So it's not a bad little book. And of course, promoting on the back a load of the things that Army Painters sell. From snips to tweezers and knives and pin drill and their own green stuff, uh, laser pens, things like that. So it's a nice little booklet. Also inside, as I mentioned previously, there is a painting guide. So, let's see the painting guide. Their selection of paints. Apparently they have 124 core war paints to use. They suggest keeping your paints fresh with a wet palette. A little section on colour theory, which is always quite nice to have a colour wheel um, somewhere in your paint studio or paint room or a little corner where you paint to. You could always cut that out, I suppose, and stick it um, on the back of your wet palette or something. Um, some basing suggestions. So bases make a difference. So from different colours, things like that. Another guide on how to assemble models. Base coating. Their brushes. 
little selection of brushes that they've got. They have 126 air colours. Now I have used a few of these. Uh, pretty good. The pigment is pretty strong. Um, I can't personally complain. Anyway, I always generally put a little drop of medium uh, or flow improver with all of my air paints anyway. So it's not just Army Painter. I would do the same with Vallejo. Not masses, but just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, the washes as well as it tells you about all the different washes. Um, contrast theory, highlighting, a little selection of different things that they sell. Game Master, which is a very much a Dungeons & Dragons style terrain. Not a bad little book. It's not bad for a little freebie thrown in there. You also get an incredibly large blister pack inside of the box. So inside here you have your spare foam, which is this bad boy here. And an absolute ton of sheets. With that blister, it gives you your little guide on how to set up your wet palette. So you soak the foam in water, place hydro foam in tray, tray, add more water if needed. So it recommends one to two millimeters of water in the tray. So when you soak the foam, you're gonna have a little bit of residual water in there and that's what they want. So it's not just a damp bit of foam or even wring it out. It does suggest one to two mil. Um, and it says if needed. So like I said, it's a bit of um, trial and error initially, but for me personally, it's just to keep my paints longer. And I am pretty bad at cleaning my tile. So I don't clean my tile very often. So <laughs> I am looking forward to just tearing these sheets off eventually and binning them. How to use your wet palette. So you add your paint, shocker, Add a little bit more water on the foam if necessary, so underneath the the sheet. Um, and obviously it does suggest on here, just in case those who didn't know, is to wipe the air bubbles out of the sheet. Because if the hydro sheet have, has air bubbles on, obviously it's not getting the moisture it needs. Plus it's not very really smooth, is it? So... You can, the whole idea of this is put the lid on it and apparently it keeps paint fresh up to 42 hours, which makes a difference for me, like I said, painting in the caravan or on a hot summer's day, my little corner of my man cave does get quite hot and the sun does bake the paint on my tiles. This is why I'm personally buying it and I'll give an honest opinion when I use it. No one's paying me to do um, a little unboxing of this. It's just my personal experience. Um, and for storage, it does suggest to empty the water from the wet palette, squeeze any excess water off the hydrofoam, and dispose of the used hydro sheet when you are done. Uh, transportation, don't tilt when paints are stored inside. I think that's pretty much a no-brainer. It does tell you uh, not to use a hot air gun and not to use if you're underneath three years of age. So I will set this up inside of my new wet palette box, which does look pretty snaz, I'm gonna have to say. So, pan back just a little bit. So here's the main dealio, and it is just an elasticated, band that goes over the box. The lid does not clip at all. It is literally just sits on the top and straight away you can see this is the paintbrush storing rack. So I do not use army painter brushes. Um, that's just my own personal preference. I do use um, series 7 but that is that's just me. So I have my series 7s here. And I do find straight away 
they're not going to fit. But you'll find probably army painters do <laughs> get stored in there. The click you can hear in the background is I always keep my Series 7s inside of my Series 7s magnetic box purely because it keeps them safe and of course magnets are indeed cool. So probably me personally won't be using this um, for some reason Windsor and Newton Series 7s do not fit in there. Army painted ones presumably do. I can't tell you one way or the other because obviously I don't have any army painters with me. And then that's the deep part of the tray where I will put my foam in a second. So I'll set that up. I'll get the foam nice and moist. Yep, some people are turning in their graves right now because I said the word moist. Um, and then I'll put the sheet over the top and I'll start using it and give it an honest opinion. That's why we do these reviews. <laughs> 